We have always had a fascination with the golden age of Hollywood, which spanned from the 1930s to the 1950s. And one of the biggest stars of that era was Marilyn Monroe. She still fascinates a lot of us. And I also find it intriguing why we are still so fascinated by her. Marilyn Monroe was born June 1st, 1926. She was raised as Norma Jean Baker. Her mother, Gladys Baker, was a film cutter at RKO Studios. It was never completely determined who Marilyn's father was, and this would be something that would haunt her for the rest of her life. Her mother, Gladys, was mentally ill and was in and out of mental institutions during Marilyn's entire childhood. Marilyn grew up in a succession of foster homes. She was a victim of at least two sexual assaults as a child, with possibly more occurring. Not all of her foster home experiences were bad, however. Her foster mother, Grace Goddard, doted on Marilyn and instilled in her a love of the movies and helped her to believe in herself. At 16, Marilyn married aircraft plant worker Jim Doherty. It started out as a marriage of convenience, with Marilyn's foster mother, Grace Goddard, moving out of state. But Jim grew to love Marilyn. Marilyn was young when Jim signed up for the Merchant Marines, and the separations took a toll on their relationship. They divorced after four years of marriage. During this time, Marilyn began modeling. What you see is a cute, young California girl with nothing extraordinary about her. But she caught the eye of Hollywood and was signed to a contract at 20th Century Fox. In those days, the studios grew the stars. Marilyn had work done on her teeth, nose, and chin. Her hair was bleached blonde, which brightened her features. This resulted in a transformation into the iconic Marilyn Monroe we all remember. During this period, she made a few unremarkable pictures, and the studio dropped her. But Marilyn had determination. She went back to modeling and began taking acting lessons. Her breakthrough came when she landed a small role in the Marx Brothers film, Love Happy. The public began to take notice of her, and her popularity soared. She was cast in The Asphalt Jungle, All About Eve, and Gentlemen with Prefer Blondes, setting her career in high motion. Marilyn met Joe DiMaggio in 1952. She was surprised to find herself so attracted to him. She had expected him to be a flashy New York sports type, but found instead that he was a solid, reserved, gentlemanly man who didn't make a pass at her right away. They married in 1954. Joe was a very jealous guy who didn't care at all for the Hollywood scene, and he resented her popularity with other men. He wanted Marilyn to be a housewife and give up her career. In the 1950s, conventional wisdom dictated that a woman was either a wife and mother or a career woman. There was no combining the roles. Marilyn had dreamed of being a star all of her life, and she wasn't about to give it all up for anyone. Marilyn had admitted to friends that Joe was the best lover she ever had, and as long as they stayed in the bedroom, their marriage was great. But outside the bedroom, there was constant arguments, and possibly even some physical abuse by Joe. They divorced after only nine months of marriage, and Joe would carry a torch for Marilyn for the rest of his life. Marilyn was growing tired of her ditzy blonde image and of being looked upon solely as a sex object and a joke. I have observed that most attractive women as they mature tire of being viewed merely as a sex object and want to be appreciated for all the different facets of their personality and intelligence. I think this is what Marilyn was going through at this time and also realizing that for career longevity she needed to be taken more seriously as an actress. So she moved to New York and was accepted into the actor's studio. 
During this period, she became reacquainted with Arthur Miller and began having an affair with him. Arthur Miller represented the serious theater, and he had an intellect that Marilyn found very attractive. Arthur Miller was fascinated by her as well, saying she was full of original observations. They married, and Arthur Miller gradually discovered that he had gotten in over his head. Marilyn's mental condition was deteriorating, and her prescription drug and alcohol abuse was escalating. She had always feared that she would end up like her mother. They divorced after four years of marriage. Marilyn seemed to be on a downward spiral and began to see psychiatrist Ralph Greenson on a regular basis. During this period, there are stories of an alleged affair with President John F. Kennedy. The story goes that Kennedy looked at her as just another notch in his belt, but Marilyn took the affair much more seriously, and she had dreams of being First Lady and thus attaining all the respectability she desperately craved. In recent years, there is a bizarre twist to the story, and that is that while Marilyn and JFK were having their affair, Marilyn became privy to some top secret information on space aliens, UFOs, and the U.S. government. When she was rejected by Kennedy, she was said to have planned to call a press conference to, quote, blow the lid off the whole damn thing. And that, in this conspiracy theory, is why she had to be silenced. With Kennedy out of the picture and Joe DiMaggio always standing in the wings, Marilyn resumed their relationship again and began making marriage preparations. Perhaps she thought that she had finally had her fill of Hollywood and would now be more than happy to settle down with Joe and become the housewife he always wanted her to be. But alas, it was not to be. Marilyn was found dead in her home on August 5, 1962. The official verdict was probable suicide. But many people find that hard to believe. And there are a variety of rumors of what happened that night, with Marilyn's death being homicide rather than suicide. We will probably never know for sure how Marilyn died. A heartbroken Joe DiMaggio made all the funeral arrangements, with most of Hollywood being excluded from the ceremony. Joe DiMaggio never remarried, and he would never speak about Marilyn again. On his deathbed, he is reported to have said to his brother, quote, Maybe I'll see Marilyn again. We can only hope that they were reunited. Why the Marilyn Mystique? Marilyn's story strikes a chord in us. There is her humble beginnings and her rise to international stardom. The love story she had with Joe DiMaggio. The connection with JFK and Camelot. The conspiracy theories of how she died. And of course, she died young. She was only 36. So she lives on in our dreams.